Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Am I supposed to do all this? Hello. Oh. Hi. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, what? No, that's all right. It's just some computer data I've got to put into a program. It's very complicated. Well, yeah, it does look difficult, but it's not a problem. <laughs> My name's Rodney. Oh, Cassandra. Ah, oh, Cassandra. It's a lovely name. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to I'm glad to say... we bumped into each other, cos I was trying to find a way of saying hello to you, and I think it's really, you know, sort of liberated of you to make the first move. Move? No, you don't understand. You've taken my coat. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It's OK. They're very similar. It's an easy mistake to make. Yeah. This one's yours. Well, how do you know it's mine? It's got your name written in it. <laughs> Look, I didn't write this. It's, it's most probably my brother, you know, it's his idea of a joke. Well, whatever. We've sorted it out now. Yeah. Well, nice meeting you. Oh, yeah, and, and you. Sandra, I was wondering whether you had time for a quick drink. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going out with a friend tonight. Oh, well, never mind. Um, can I walk you to your car? Oh, thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Here we are. I'm full. Thank you for getting me here safely. I think nothing of it. It's a nice car my father's. Do you live round there? Blackheath. How about you? Uh, Peckham. Where are you parked? Oh, no, I lent my car to my brother. Well, I wish I hadn't now, after what he wrote in my coat, the little rascal. <laughs> oh, I'll get a bus down the terminus. I'm going past the terminus, if you'd like a lift. Oh, thank you. Ah. Rodney! <laughs> Rodney! I think someone's calling you. Really? <laughs> hey, over here. Hung about for you. Give your lift on. Oh, yeah, that's... someone I know. Well, thanks for the offer, anyway. OK. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Who's the tart? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Think it out. What's the matter? Is he giving you lines or something? <laughs> why did you write my name inside that raincoat? Well, cos Mum said to me on her deathbed, she's... Why did you write it, you dick? All right, all right. She said to me, make sure you always write Rodney's name in his clothes, that way no one will nick him. <laughs> and I was just giving him a promise. I was so embarrassed. Yeah, but no one nicked your coat, did they? <laughs> 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 hey, Trig, Trig, huh? Trig, over here. Trig, old boy. Oh, yeah. What's you doing here? <laughs> well, I'm always here. I'm a regular here now. Here, uh, John, get my main to pint of lager, will you? I'm afraid we don't serve beers, sir. Huh? Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, I remember now, yeah. Yeah, there was uh, no call for it, so they knocked it on the head. Do you fancy a spitzer? Uh, yeah, I'll give it a try. Oh, right. yeah. Anyway, what are you doing down here, Trick? I thought you'd be in the old uh, Nag's head. Yeah, I was. But Mike's just barred me. Barred you? What for? He accused me of stealing one of his pork pies. What do I want his rotten pork pies for? I don't even like pork pies. Oh, he's getting right out of order, that bloke. He really is. I'm thinking of suing him for deep... definite... <laughs> Slander? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it, Trigger. I wouldn't worry. He's done you a favour, actually. No, he really has. I mean, you look round here. This place is full of yuppie sorts. 
Yeah, we can't go wrong here. All we've got to do is learn their language. Why, they're foreign, then? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just that they're yuppies. They don't speak proper English like what we do. I mean, I've been ear holding them. It's all yar, super and fab and all that game. Yeah. And they love to talk about money. It's their favourite subject. I mean, you chat about money and you can't fail to impress them. Yeah? Yeah, God's honest. I saw one of them old five-pound notes the other day. <laughs> come here, come here, trick, trick. No, 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 mate. I don't mean talk about your bloody coin collection, do I? No, I mean you just got to talk about your wealth. Yeah, but I ain't got none of that. Well, neither have half of these. They're all living in sin with their flexible friends. <laughs> I just mean you've got to chat about it. You've got to talk... That's all. <clears throat> Look, I'll show you how it's done. Look, watch me, watch this. <clears throat> it's all go when you're in a high-profile business, isn't it, girls, eh? Really? Yeah. Of course, I'm in stocks and shares myself. Yeah, I bought a few thousand shares in a little department store this afternoon. Now I've got a phone with Laura and my accountant. That <laughs> gives you the um, doesn't it? Mm. Excuse me, sorry. How do you spell Arads? Capital A. Oh, capital A. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I see. All right. Beam me up, snotty. <laughs> it's all you need, isn't it, eh? Yeah. Here, have this. I don't want it. Thanks. <laughs> see, nowadays, these modern Euro birds, they go for the more mature men who've made it in life. Yeah? Right? Is that why we're having no luck? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't started yet. Just building myself up to it. Yeah, well, you better hurry up and be closing time soon. All right, all right. <clears throat> I think we're on a winner here, Tree. All right. Play it nice and cool, son. Nice and cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> Drink up, we're leaving. <laughs> Aren't you going to try for them birds? No, no, you're cramping my style, mate. You're cramping my style. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Oh, that's the last time I trust you with anything, Rodney. Look, I've already told you there's something wrong with that machine. I asked him to set this to record a programme on ITV called City News. What have I got? Open University on BBC Two. So instead of keeping my fingers on the ever-changing pulse of the stock market, I'm watching Christopher Dopey Wren on how he built St Paul's Cathedral. It's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, you would. You were most probably around when he applied for planning permission. <laughs> in here, isn't it? Is it all right if I turn the thermostat up? Yeah. You sure it's not too technical for you? <laughs> oh, you dipstick, Rodney. Now look at your damn. Me? I, I thought Rodney knew about videos. Yeah. Emmanuel in Bangkok, and that's about it. <laughs> I programmed that computer to record the program you wanted. Now, it's not my fault if it decided to record something else, is it? That machine is... Up the wall. Oh, you're trying to blind me with science now, aren't you? Personally, I think these computers are more trouble than they're worth. Where did you figure that out? There was a film on earlier all about computers. You're joking. Oh, I wish I'd recorded it. Well, hang around, Rodney. You most probably have. <laughs> it was called War Games. It was all about this soppy kid who messes around with computers. And one day, he broke into the computer that controls the American nuclear defence system. He almost got us into World War Three. <laughs> no chance of that happening with Rodney, is there? World War Three. This plonker can't even get us into Channel Three. Have <laughs> you read the instructions to your video recorder? <sighs> no, I haven't actually read them. Either. Well, why don't you do that small thing, Derek? I think you'll find it very interesting because we have instructions in German, Spanish, French, and Italian, and not one single word in English. 
And that's why your machine don't work. It was made strictly for sale in Europe. But we are in Europe. We're in the common market, aren't we? Yes, I know that. But we've got a different electrical system to the rest of Europe. And that's why your machine is on the blink. Its components are burning out. It is what's technically known as knackered. <laughs> I tell you, Willie Nelson's touched you up. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, that's all I need, isn't it? You won't be able to sell the others now, Del. Too late, Hung. I've sold them all this afternoon. You've sold them? Mm. 70, uh, 60 quid each. <laughs> You'll have to give the money back. Why? Because they don't work. Well, what do you expect for 60 quid? <laughs> I've been fucked up. I'm just passing it on, that's all. It's business. Oh, don't worry about it. Everything is going to be cushy. You are something else, you are. You're too picky, Rodney. That's your problem. <clears throat> Funny sound. I don't know. What you looking at me for? <laughs> the most funny sounds in this flat tend to emanate from your vicinity. <laughs> Why well, did you do it? <clears throat> Is that funny noise? Oh, well, shush. Right? Them off. <laughs> Thought you said you heard a sussing sound. I did. I was making a funny noise, like something was going to happen. <sighs> the only thing that's happened so far is poor old Mum's clothing's got all dirty. I should have to take it all down to dry cleaners now. Hell, them dolls are dangerous. They've been on the news everywhere. How do you know it was them dolls that they was talking about? I know, right? I just know. Well, the only thing that I know is I've got 60 quid laying out over there. We're hanging about here like a couple of spare ones at a wedding. <laughs> <coughs> oh, come on. I've had enough of this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Told him not to have the mutton vindaloo. <laughs> Mummy, that could have happened anywhere, Rodders. Oh, no, we only just got rid of them in time. We was well lucky. No. It's not luck, Rodney. It's Mum. Mum? Yeah. She's up there somewhere, watching over us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they all going, is it? Well, 
Good night, Del. Lovely meeting you. And you too, sweetheart. But don't forget, I won't say a word. Thank you. Mm. I'll see you in a little while. Mm. Wait, Rodney, where do you think you're going? Cassandra's giving me a lift home. Ah, it's all right. Don't bother yourself, sweetheart. We've got the van here. Excuse me one moment while I go and kill him. What do you think you're playing at, Derek? I told you I got a bit of a deal going down here in a little while. Yeah, and I told you I don't want nothing to do with it. I know you did. But I got to meet that Arnie in the back of the car park there where it's nice and dark. Now, I've only just recently met the geezer, so I don't know what I'm walking into. So I would appreciate a bit of a backup, all right? Yeah, but I wanted to say goodnight to Cassandra. Go on, then. Say goodnight. Do you get back here a bit lively? No, I meant... I'm bloody hell. <laughs> I'll give me a couple of minutes. What's happening? I'm going to have to drive Del home. He's drunk. Drunk? He doesn't look drunk. No, no. That's a bad sign with him. He hides it well, you see. But I tell you, you could push him over with just one little finger, he'd fall flat on his face. Oh, it's a problem of his I've had to live with since I was a little kid. How sad. Yeah, I know. It's tragic. Still, never mind, eh? <laughs> Poor girl up for air, <laughs> Sorry. Do you fancy coming out for a meal on Thursday? I thought I told you I'm on a week's training course. Yeah, well, you must be able to get a few hours off. Oh, yes. And if you fancy flying over to Guernsey, I'd love to have dinner with you. Guernsey? you got to go all the way over to Guernsey? Yes. I did ask Guernsey if it would like to come to me, but it refused point blank. I've heard about these company training courses. They're just an excuse for loads of people to have an orgy. Really? Please be serious for one moment, Cassandra. Look, Rodney, if what you've heard is true and all these perfectly staid and boring people suddenly hurl themselves into a pit of carnal abandon, it doesn't mean I have to join in, does it? No, I suppose not. No suppose about it. No, I'm sorry, you're right. Of course I'm right. I mean, I'll take my whip, just in case. <laughs> I'll phone you. I'll phone you as well. Better make sure we don't phone at the same time, otherwise we'll both be engaged. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I love you. Do you? And I... He's here. <laughs> Don't have a nice time, will you? I'll try not to. What's he doing, Rodney? What do you mean, what's he doing? You can see what he's doing. He's sitting in a window there reading a the menu. It's a bit suspicious, isn't it? What, a bloke sitting in a restaurant reading a menu? Yeah, <laughs> very iffy. Could you get me a glass of water, please? I'm feeling rather hot. So... <sighs> Would you care to order now? Yes, I'd like an ambulance. <laughs> an ambulance? Yes, an ambulance. I'm not very well. Yes, sir. Telephone for an ambulance, presto! Are you all right, sir? <laughs> What's happened? It's Arnie. He's had a connery. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know. I think you have to pump their chests or something. I'm talking about our bloody money and chains. <laughs> we can do now, is there? My money and my gold I ain't going to no National Health Hospital. The entire kitchen staff will be off to Miami if it does. What are you going to do? Watch. 
Don't panic. I am a doctor. <laughs> stand aside, stand aside, let the dog see the rabbit. <laughs> oh, yes, very nasty. He needs an operation. He's not a doctor. He's mugging the poor man. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, madam. I call the police. <laughs> All right, there'll be no need. I am an officer of the law. <laughs> I'm a small town policeman. <laughs> Do you get the impression all he's not going according to plan? <laughs> okay, sunshine, you are Nick. Come on, out you go. Rest assured, madam, when we get him down the police station, we'll give him a bloody good hiding. Hey, come on, you. Yeah, come on. Yeah, what happened? God, he's had a connery. You mean he's dead? No, no, he's still alive. The ambulance got here just in time. So where's the money and the gold? Where do you think it is? It's in Arnie's hold all. Why don't you make us leave the restaurant? Because they've just called the old bill. Arnie's got seven and a half grand of your unlaundered money, plus a case full of gold from a VAT fraud. Do you want to tell the police that it's really yours? <laughs> Why didn't you try and get the case off his wrist? Oh, God, blind old Riley, you tried that, didn't you? And you got a punch in the nose and a whack over your head for your trouble. What do you think, I'm a wally or something? So how are we going to get it back? Do I? We'll go to the hospital. All we've got to do is find out what time the visiting hours are. It'll be cushy. But we don't know which hospital they're taking him to. We'll follow them. Mike, your car's pretty nippy. You do the following. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. I've been clamped. Rodney, follow that ambulance. Lonka. Right, well, where are they then? Well, the courier said, mate, at the desk. Oh, there it is. Huh? Ah. Right, pour the sangria hose, eh? We have arrived. Yes, hang on, hang on. Just before you go and check in, um, this prize ain't quite as straightforward as it seems. Well, he did win, didn't he? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, it's all puckering above board and all that. I mean, we're um, we, you know, we got all the tickets and everything, yeah. <laughs> so what's the problem? That's strange, you know. Mm -hmm. What? Well, I noticed it on the plane, but it didn't sort of register. They're all mums and dads. They've all brought their kids with them. What's strange about that? Well, except for me, right? All the winners are parents. No, it's not the parents that are the winners, Rodney. It's the kids. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, Rodney's painting won first prize in an under 15 year old. <laughs> Say again. So they think Rodney's 15? <laughs> Is that right? No. They think you're 14. 14? <laughs> I think I'm 14. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me this back in England? Well, I thought it might cast a little cloud over the holiday. <laughs> Look, Rodney, I sent your painting off in good faith. I mean, I didn't know there were lots of categories, but it was you, not me. You were the one that wrote on it, Rodney Trotter, age 14 and a half. So the organisers must have put you in the kids' category. So it's your fault that you wrote on it. Uh, it was hard to know that in 12 years' time you were going to enter it for a cornflakes competition. Well, how was I supposed to know that you'd win? Eh? Hey? Anyway, doesn't matter. Now, come on, come on. You're going to waltz through it. Waltz through? How the hell am I going to pass for false time? <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop doing that, Cassandra? <laughs> Act your age. <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> Just look, just look over there, look. Look, some of those lads, look, they're over six foot tall. Fifteen and sixteen year olds, they look much older these days than they used to, and you've got the added advantage of your boyish good looks. That's why there was three tickets, isn't it? One each for Mummy and Daddy and one for the sport. 
<laughs> you can't expect 13 and 14 year olds to go abroad on their own, can you, eh? <laughs> and what exactly is your role in all this? <laughs> well, um, when the cornflakes people phoned up, they said that you had to be accompanied by your parents. So I said, and I, I don't know why I did it. <laughs> I must have been flustered at the time. I said that I was your dad. My dad? <laughs> did you hear that, Cassandra? Yeah. <laughs> and who the hell am I supposed to be, his mum? Oh, well, please tell me this is a bad dream. <laughs> You don't pretend, Cassandra. You're only pretending, aren't you? I mean, you haven't got to check behind his ears or pick him up from school or nothing like that, have you? I think we should go and tell them the truth. Just a minute, Dopey. Just a minute. We're here now, aren't we? If we all keep stum, we can have a lovely free holiday. But if they find out we're lying, they'll chuck us out of the hotel. And if they find out we're telling the truth, they'll chuck us out of the hotel. Now, return flight's not for another week, so what are we going to do? They'll probably stick us in one of those Spanish halfway homes. Well, at some point, they are going to realise I am not 14. <laughs> but we'll be back in the hotel by then, won't they? there would be nobody there to ask questions. Come on, we're on holiday, eh? Well, whatever else it turns out to be, it's an experience. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl, that's right. You know it makes sense, don't you? <laughs> that's it. Now, come on. Come on, then. Come on. Let's get over there and check in. Come on. Yeah, don't forget you, you act a bit mumsy, all right? What do you mean, mumsy? I don't know, you know, just a bit mumsy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's really nice here. I've just been down to reception. I bought some Spanish state lottery tickets. I filled them in, I filled them in for you and everything. I bought some for you, look. There's some for Rodney there, look. And there's some for me. All right, I'll put yours down here. There you go. You never know. Never know our luck, cos we're on a winning roll, aren't we? <laughs> Tell that to poor Rodney. Oh, look, don't keep going on about it. You're going to spoil the holiday, you are. Listen, have you a look around. What's here? Ah, oh, yeah, that's very nice. That must be Rodney's room. It's got a picture of Prince on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> if that's Rodney's room, where am I supposed to sleep? Well, well I thought that uh, you and Rodney... <clears throat> no, maybe not. I mean, no. <laughs> I'll sleep in there. You and Rodney can have the honeymoon bed. All right, all right. Anything you say, sweetheart, anything you say, I just thought it might be a bit strange when the old maid come in, you know, see me and old Rodney tucked up on the king size. <laughs> it would look even stranger if she found Rodney sleeping with his stepmother. <laughs> I never thought of that. I'd better go and cancel breakfast in bed. <clears throat> Mister, do you want me to take that picture of Prince down off the wall there? Just Ge leave it, Derek. You've done enough for Rodney and I as it is. Oh, look. I thought the Cornflakes people would leave us alone to enjoy our holiday. I didn't know they were going to conscript Rodney into the groovy gang. I mean, why do they want to do that? Mr Perkins explained it to us. It's so the youngsters won't get bored and the parents can have a rest. I won't see him all week, will I? Yes, of course you will. <laughs> He's bound to get a spot of leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there he is. There they all go now. Hey, Rodney, don't go mad. <laughs> we just went down over that hill there. That was quick, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. They were on skateboards. <laughs> Rodney was the leader. He was right out in front. <laughs> leader of the pack. Oh, my God. Hmm? Hello? May I come in? Yes, come in. Oh. Hello, Mrs Trotter. Sure, sure. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> good afternoon, Carmen. Is uh, Rodney here? No, he's not here at the moment. Oh. Oh, he's still out enjoying himself. <laughs> yes. Well, it's just to let him know about the junior disco on Wednesday night. But I'll come back later and see him then. Bye for now. That's it. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, it's all right. Rodney likes a little dance. <laughs> it's a junior disco. Well, all right. We'll say he's ill. Oh, what more lies? No, that'll be the truth. <laughs> when we tell him, he's bound to be at Tottenham Dick. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm going to have a wash. Let me go downstairs and see if we can get something to eat. All right. What about Rodney? Oh, that's all right. We'll pick him up down there somewhere. Yeah, just look for the nearest sand pit. <laughs> Very funny, yeah. <laughs> what have you been doing? <laughs> I've been skateboarding, Cassandra. Oh, I see. Hi, Stel. He's having a wash. <laughs> Derek. Hey, brothers. Yeah, 
Yes, I'm back. <laughs> could you come out, please? I'd like a word with you. <laughs> no, could you come out now? Oh, I've got my pants off, Rodney. <laughs> well, it's quite urgent, Dale. Yeah, right. Give us five minutes, I'll be with you. Sorry about the bad language, Cassandra. What bad language? Get it in there, you dipstick! I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> oi, 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 oi! What's up with you? I'll tell you what's up with me. Thanks to you, I am now a 26-year-old man who just comes second in a skateboard derby. <laughs> second? You were in the lead when I saw you. <laughs> May I ask you, once contact has been made, Refrain from interrupting. Now, hands on the table. Fingers touching. <laughs> Concentrate. What's she doing? She's going. <laughs> I can see that. Why is she doing it? She's got into a trance. Thank God for that. She had one of my pies earlier. The spirits are with us. A man has stepped forward, a tall elderly man wearing a black coat and a black hat. He wishes to speak to someone called Audrey. No, no, no Aubrey. Aubrey? <laughs> I am here. <laughs> My middle name. You never said your name was Aubrey. <laughs> Nor would you if your name was Aubrey. <laughs> this man seems agitated. He's brandishing a piece of paper. Have you any idea who it could be? No. This piece of paper. It's not a logbook for a Cortina, is it? No, it's a photograph, a black and white photograph. It shows this man, but years younger. There's an odd-looking boy standing beside him, five or six years old. Evil face. Boy, she, it's you and your dad. Yeah, that's right. He was the only one who ever called me Aubrey. There is a sadness about the photograph, as though something was missing. Oh, yes, of course, your mother, she isn't with you. No. Had she passed over to the other side? No, she was taking a photo. <laughs> this man is worried. He says you must be a good father. You must look after your child. Is he having a pop at me or something? Elsie, Boise and his wife Marlene can't have kids. No, they've been trying for years, you know, but Nitto. Yeah, they've had tests, things frozen, everything. <laughs> We've just about given up with him. He's low on something. <laughs> Do you mind not discussing my personal life in front of strangers? You could tell my old man to keep his nose out of my business. He was always having a go at me for not giving him a grandchild. Right, calm down, Aubrey. <laughs> Up for a start. I'm gonna get a drink. It's all a load of old rubbish anyway. I never believed a word of it. Excuse me. <laughs> I've got good news and bad news, Dell. The good news is they put me in charge of your case. Ah. What's the bad news? I specialise in amputation. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. <clears throat> Here, do you still get down the old 111 club? No, not anymore, Dale. I pack gambling in. It's a mug's game. 
You still go down there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, how come you're in charge? It was an accident, really. I just happened to be talking to some colleagues when the name Derek Trotter cropped up. So I asked if I could read your GP's report and have a look at your tests. Hmm? I was amazed. I found myself reading about this non-smoking, teetotal, celibate, vegetarian health freak. I thought, can this be the same Derek Trotter that I know and begrudgingly admire? That uptight, wheeling, dealing, pina colada lout. The Castella King. And was it? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you lie to your GP, Del? Well, she's a doctor, isn't she? I don't understand. Well, you never told the doctors the truth, otherwise they put you in the hospital. But you've been put in hospital. Yeah, I know, but I didn't mean that to happen, did I? I thought you'd just give me a bottle of jollop. Dale, if you'd have told the truth in the first place, my colleagues could have diagnosed your problem in a quarter of the time. Well, told her I did have a cigar at Christmas time. We now know what's wrong with you, Dale. All right. Let's hear the worst. I can take it. I'm not frightened. Don't pull any punches. I want it straight from the shoulder. Yeah, I think it's best in the long run. Well, basically, Derek, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank Allah. Thank Buddha. Thank you. Thank you, God. <laughs> Relieved, eh? Well, you know. <laughs> what about these pains? What are these pains then, Doc? You have an irritable bowel. I'm not surprised with you lot pulling me about. <laughs> no, no, that's what your condition is called. You have an irritable bowel syndrome. It's nothing serious. I'll put you on a course of drugs. Your condition has been caused by your lifestyle. The late nights, the booze, the nicotine, the fried fast foods. Do you ever think about all that saturated fat floating around your arteries? Well, I try not to. Puts me off me grab. <laughs> One of the major contributory factors of this syndrome is stress. A lot of yuppies suffer from it. <laughs> Del, I took the liberty of phoning the Director of Housing about your rent arrears. Ah, how did you find out? I phoned your flat. I'm sorry, mate. I had to find out what the hell was going on. I spoke to your uncle. The council have agreed to give you some breathing space, a bit of time to get yourself together. Right. Cheers, Ruby. You've been given a warning, Del. Nature's way of telling you to eat muesli for breakfast. Cut right down on the drink and the cigars. Yeah. Whatever you say, Doc. Here. Pop this into the pharmacy on your way home. You mean I can go? Yeah. And don't come back. I want you convalescing for the next three weeks. I don't want you working or getting excited. Sit in a chair, eat boring foods and live a boring life. Oh, that'll be easy. I'll sit in the flat and talk to my Uncle Albert. <laughs> See you around, Dale. Yes. Thank you. Thanks very much, Robbie. Uh, I knew there was nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Sick the old sod. What is all this about, the Driscoll brothers? Nothing, nothing at all. Listen, if the Driscoll brothers come in here asking for me, you ain't seen me, all right? Listen, I've uh, heard of the Driscoll brothers, Del, but I've never seen them. what they look like? Well, one of them looks as though he was evicted from the planet of the apes. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one reminds me of Cliff Richards. What, he looks uh, younger than his years? No, he's got one of them faces that you want to slap. <laughs> here, Chief, did you get Alan off home all right? Yeah. There was almost an accident. The yeah. minicab driver nearly reversed into the Driscoll Brothers' Mercedes. The Driscoll Brothers? They're here. What door are they coming in? Well, I don't know. They were just getting out of the Del, car. Quick, upstairs. Hide in the hall. Quickly. Oh, Mickey, Jeff, on, quick. Come on, up there. Quick. I see how nice. Hello, Danny. Huh. Your brother not with you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, watch it, Tony.
drink? No. Is that right, Marlene's up the spout? Yeah. Dear, dear, dear. Will you let us know the moment you find out who done it and we'll sort him out? <laughs> Yeah, right oh, Danny. <laughs> yeah, good one, Danny, good one. Hell <laughs> boy around? Uh, no, no. I ain't seen him this evening. Well, that's funny. His van's in the car park. And what's this? The Costello and the Malibu Reef. You sure he's not around? Think hard, Governor. Well, he may have been in earlier, and then he left. Oh, I see. You just had this place decorated? Yeah. Shame. <laughs> I want to buy everyone in a pub a drink. Whatever they want. Now, there's a pound. And I want change. <laughs> Large cognac, please, Michael. <laughs> doing here? What's you doing here? It's got nothing to do with you. What are you doing here with us? I don't know, really. He said, quick, upstairs, so I just went. There's a doorknob there, Tony. Why don't you just turn it like a human being? Bathroom? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was... thanks for walking out and leaving me like that. Sorry, I, I had too, too much to drink. I um, felt bad. I'm still feeling a bit rough, Rodney. Oh, oh um, and thanks for not giving me that money. Then you explain that you had something more important to spend it on and you promised me. I told Cassandra and her mum and dad and everything. I said, I've got the money. What am I going to look like now, eh? I'll tell you what I'm going to look like now. I'm going to look like the right tithead. That's what I'm going to look like. <laughs> Your money's on the... on the table. Dale? Thanks. It's all right, Rob. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Dale? Yeah. I'm sorry, right? <laughs> Shut up, you tart. <laughs> You're still going to be my best man, aren't you? Yeah, of course I am. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a good old knees up, eh? I think I've had enough of that for one night, Rodney. <laughs> And, and I'll tell you what, we'll have a good old sing-song. Yeah. As long as you don't mind me sounding like the Bee Gees. <laughs> I do solemnly declare... I do solemnly declare... That I know of no lawful impediment... That I know of no lawful impediment... Why I may not be joined in matrimony to this woman, Cassandra Louise Parry. 
why I may not be joined in matrimony to this woman, Cassandra Louise Perry. Do you have the ring? I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Rodney Charlton Trotter. <laughs> that I, Rodney Charlton Trotter. I would appreciate it if the guests would conduct themselves in a manner more becoming to the occasion. Thank you. That I, Rodney Charlton Trotter. <laughs> Take this woman, Cassandra Louise Parry to be my lawful wedded wife. Take this woman, Cassandra Louise Perry, to be my lawful wedded wife. Now, repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Cassandra Louise Perry. To witness that I, Cassandra Louise Perry. Take this man, Rodney Ch Rodney Trotter. Take <laughs> this man, Rodney Trotter. To be my lawful wedded husband to be my lawful wedded husband. Now you have now both made the declarations required by law, and if you had made a solemn and binding contract with each other in the presence of your witnesses. You are now husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Thank you. <laughs> 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 